Trisha Berry. Trisha Berry, czar of public relations. I happen to know this woman. She has a hands-on work ethic, getting down in the trenches for clients to create aggressive campaigns that influence public perception and get results regardless of the client's industry and market. It's like it's a queen for a day type of thing. After a decade as a reporter, you recognize her as a reporter, anchor, and producer at Kent's Five, but she launched her career in public relations as a founding partner in Guerra de Berry Cootie and in 2012 started her own agency, the De Berry Group. Woo! How did you come up with that name? I don't uh, know. Uh, specializing in public relations, public affairs, manage, uh, marketing, and social media. Let's give it up for Trish De Berry. Wow, what an honor and a privilege it is to be here tonight. It is one of those typical San Antonio beautiful nights. I was talking to somebody, and you can always count on there to be a breeze. Probably not one this stiff, but you can count on there to be one. Secondly, I want to thank Pekka, Petra Kucha for inviting me back. Uh, this is for me part de, uh, because I was invited to be a presenter last time, but I was stricken with the flu and lost my voice and could not present. So thank you uh, for allowing me to come back. And thirdly, to Rebecca Villagran, this is a beautiful, sustainable space. Amazing place to be, especially on a perfect evening like this. So thank you for the work that you've done, as well as the San Antonio River Foundation. You know, I am, I'm chair of the board of Centro, and a lot of it is about redevelopment in the urban core, but we are doing some amazing development in all parts of the city, and certainly the south side is one of those. So my mother often told me, uh, she went to Breckenridge High School here in San Antonio, she said the South will rise again, and it certainly has. Uh, and for Gary, um, and I'll wrap this up quickly because I know we need to get on with the show, I reintroduced myself to Gary because it was in 2001 when I bought one of his art pieces. I was managing Ed Garza's campaign for mayor, and there was a fundraiser at Bill Fitzgibbon's house and Gary's pieces were being shown. And the piece that I bought, and believe me, at that time I was not making a whole lot of money and it was way beyond the realm of what I thought I could afford, but I thought it was really, really cool. And it's a piece that really incorporates the pieces of Masa. And it spells out in red corn, V-O-T-E, vote. And it is supposed to represent the power of the Hispanic vote. And still to this day, it is hung on the walls of my office for 18 years and there are people that are struck by that piece of art so thank you gary for what you contribute to the artistic fabric of san antonio because gary's art should adorn all of our walls so all right on with the show so i am ceo of the deberry group i've been in public relations 18 years and when i tell people that i do public relations they're like well that's pretty cool but when I tell them that I do crisis communications, inevitably, they say, oh, like Olivia Pope on that show Scandal. Well, folks, um, we could not be more different. Because A, Olivia Pope is involved in a very sexy, intimate relationship with the President of the United States. She lives a far more glamorous life than I do on any day of the week. But where we depart majorly is like I said, she's not only having an intimate relationship with the president, she's sleeping with him. And ladies and gentlemen, no way, no how would I ever have an intimate relationship with this president, ever. <laughs> I'm glad I got a little bit loud for that. He is a crisis communications unto himself, a real conundrum. But what Olivia Pope and I do share in common is a love of shoes. And I'm not sure where that love began, other than the fact that it allows me to express my creative self in a very serious business. And so I'm gonna let you walk in my shoes for a little bit so you can see kind of how my life prepared me for crisis communications work. We're gonna take some baby steps. These are my baby shoes. Handed down to me by one of my five brothers and sisters. Yes, there were six of us. And they were um, hand-me-downs because we couldn't afford new shoes by and large. And so living in a house with two bedrooms and six kids in one bathroom, you can imagine the kind of crisis and chaos there was in the house on a daily basis. So you learn very early on to speak up so that you can be heard for sure. But adding to the tension and the crisis in the house was that my parents 
not only had different styles of raising children, but they came from two very different political ideologies. My father was a conservative Republican and my mother was a liberal Democrat. So you can understand what the conversations at the dinner table might be like. So in a word, that relationship did not last. My parents divorced after 21 years of marriage and I found myself in kind of a, a personal crisis in elementary school. But I really found my footing, not only in school, asking lots of questions, um, but on the playground, in these kinds of shoes, playing with boys, baseball, football, running track, and it really taught me, I never really thought that I was a girl. I mean, I could compete with the boys with the best of them, and those are important lessons. When I parlayed that into kind of a softball career for seven years, I really began to build a lot of confidence because you learn really base by base by base the value of teamwork. I had a pretty good pitch on the mound, I had a good swing, and I had a very strong arm. And so all of those lessons were very important. Fast forward 15 years into television news, I walk into Ken's TV. I had good shoes, but I had really bad hair. That's bad 80s hair there, folks. Um, but I had an identity crisis because I had to go by Pat. They made me go by that, but my name was Trish. And so Randy would toss it to live shots and say, Pat DeBerry is standing by live now. Trish, what's going on out there? The viewing public was like, what the hell is her name? We don't understand this. Needless to say, I went through a lot of pairs of shoes covering tragic fires, the comfort bus tragedy, Guadalupe River flooding, indelible memories that will make an impression for the rest of my life. Shortly thereafter, I decided to try on a different pair of shoes in the field of public relations and built a business with two other partners for 13 years. It was a successful business, but some days that there were crises as you meet payroll, as you develop a client base, and it was at that time that then city councilman Ed Garza decided that for whatever reason, he wanted to tap me to be his campaign manager. Ladies and gentlemen, I had never managed a political career in my life. Talk about stepping outside your comfort zone. It was a wild ride. Fortunately, Ed Garza, a severe underdog, won by a landslide, only the second Hispanic mayor elected in San Antonio history. Shortly thereafter, I got married, and then I was on the cover of a magazine deemed politically pregnant. For those of you who cannot see, it says, I am heavy with child and political prowess. That is pretty bad. Um, they also wanted me to pose bare belly. No way that was gonna happen. But I managed a lot of political campaigns after that, and in 2009, I found myself in a campaign for mayor. I ran for mayor. I lost, pounded the pavement, looking for votes, but it was an incredible experience. And it taught me some very valuable lessons, and lessons that I really am able to impart even with my kids today. My son here is 15. He was seven on election day, and I still remember him running up to me saying, Mom, why aren't you crying? You didn't win. And I told him, I said, son, it doesn't matter if you come in second. If you gave it your all and your best effort and gave it 150%, that's all that matters. Today, I find myself, Bob Rivard, these are my favorite pair of shoes. They're spinning shoes or cycling shoes because I get on that bike every single day. I ride on hills, I go down hills, and I really think that it's an analogy as far as life is concerned. We never know when we get on that bike every day for life where it's gonna take us. And that's really been kind of my motto throughout my career. Robert Frost's poem, The Road Less Taken, has always been my motto. I've always looked at the path or the road less taken, no matter how challenging. Maybe it wasn't a path that a woman was supposed to embark upon, but as a result of that, I've grown immensely. There's no challenge that I'm really afraid of. I embrace opportunity. As they say, ain't no mountain high enough, ain't no river wide enough, I'm ready to jump in. And so I hope that I serve as a role model, particularly to young women in the day and age in which we live today in the hashtag Me Too movement, because enough has been enough. And to bring it back to the shoes, what I would tell everybody in the audience is, if the shoe fits, don't just wear it, wear it really well and even if it doesn't and you don't think it fits try it on for size because you never know where it might take you thank you wow well, that was that was very ins ins inspiring um, let's take a look at her shoes first um, you can't really anyway, see them have you always been a risk taker trish 
Yeah, I think so. I mean, like I said, growing up in a large family, um, you took risks. I mean, that was just kind of, and I was raised by a very strong mother who was, who said into my mind very early on, there was nothing that you can't do. Yeah, I agree with that. I, I, um, I, I'm a big fan of failure, and, and uh, you, uh, you don't seem to be afraid of anything. I, I, no, and I impressive. think that, yes, and I think that that's a really important lesson is that you fall forward. Yes. And, I, and, I, and I tell young people that all the time, that don't live life with regret. Right. Major in the unafraid. Yeah. Because you don't want to look back 20 years from now and say, shoulda, coulda, woulda. I wish I would have done that. Yeah. But at least if you tried and you failed, at least you tried. What, a, what, what an inspiration. Anyway, thank you very much, Trish. Thank you, Gary. What a great job.